Anytime we started to add power, the airplane would just start vibrating just violently. One situation I had with a student um, about about three and a half years ago, uh, we were just doing our you know planned long cross country for him. He's working on his private license, and uh, we were flying out of San Marcos, uh, south of Austin, Texas, and just a nice, pretty, sunny day. Uh, nothing unusual with weather, um, but our trip was going to go north to Waco, and then out to Llano, and then back to San Marcos. Just our three points for cross country. So, normal trip, um, we did our first two legs, no problems. Uh, we uh, were coming back in on our final leg. Um, we were coming back in and, and our cruise altitude was about 7,500 feet. We were about 20 miles outside of San Marcos. So, you know, talking to my student, I'm like, all right, let's go start planning our descent. You know, what kind of rate of descent do we want to use to get down to, you know, our area out there. Coming in from the west of San Marcos is all hill country, so it's mostly just kind of rolling hills, um, not mountains or anything, but rolling hills, a uh, few lakes out there, and then and there's a lot of trees. There's not a whole lot of open spots. A um, couple of private runways, a couple of grass runways, a couple of concrete runways that are kind of sporadically thrown out there. Um, but about 20 miles out, we started our descent, and just a regular descent, we're coming down, and I said, let's go ahead and level off at about, about 3,500 feet. So he's like, not a problem. He starts leveling off, and as we level off, he starts put a little bit of power back in just to go back to a cruise, cruise flight from descent. And as we level off, we start to get some pretty heavy vibration in the airplane and everything in the airplane was just shaking. Um, now this particular airplane that we've got for our flight school is pretty rock solid. It's, uh, the maintenance on it is pristine. I mean, nothing on the airplane is broken. You don't see any in-op uh, labels in the airplane anywhere. So the fact that it's vibrating this is pretty concerning. Um, so it, it turned into a pretty pretty significant vibration in the front, and I honestly thought that the engine was something was going on with the engine. I thought the engine was basically coming apart. Um, I immediately told him I had the controls. I knew that off on our left side there was a runway, um, a private runway down there, so I had him start looking for it um, while I was trying to troubleshoot this issue. Um, we had about 1,500 RPM, was about all we could maintain without getting a lot of vibration in the engine. Anytime we started to add power, the airplane would just start vibrating just violently. Um, so I was very cautious. What I didn't want to happen is put too much power in and then the engine just completely come apart, you know, and now we're, you know, in a situation where either I don't have a runway or we're going to have to put this thing down in the hills where there's trees, um, <clears throat> which I didn't want to do. So I'm having him look for a runway, so I'm slowly bringing power in just kind of listening to the engine and listening to it come up. And at about, about 2100 RPM, the vibration started to actually subside. It started going away. So I slowly was adding power and got it to about 2300 RPM and it was all, all the vibration had gone away and it was running smooth. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna leave it right here. I'm not gonna mess with anything else. Uh, we had gotten now probably about 10 miles out uh, from our destination airport, San Marcos. So I called the tower, told them where we were, told them we were experiencing some engine issues. Um, and they said, okay, we'll just come, you know, straight in. We had a runway that we were pretty much lined up on, runway 13. So they just come in straight in for runway 13. So I was all right. So we left the power setting, obviously, you know, monitoring everything. On the way in, we started noticing this unusual smell. Um, I know what burning oil smells like. I know what electrical, uh, burning electrical smells like, and this was neither. And I knew I'd smelt it before, but I wasn't been quite able to put my finger on it um, until we got on the ground and actually figured out what it was. Um, so as we're coming in, we're, we're coming in on the glide path. I didn't want to mess with the engine settings at all, so I left it at that about 2300 RPM setting until I absolutely knew we had the runway made. Um, at that point, we pulled the power out all the way and just made our descent down, landed on the runway, no issues, taxied in and got out of the airplane I got out as he was securing things on the inside. I got out of the airplane and walked around. <clears throat> and the original cowling fasteners on the airplane there, I think they're Southco um, cowling fasteners, we had already had a plan to replace them because they were getting worn out. Well, uh, evidently, when we had leveled off, it was just enough force on the cowling to pop a couple of them loose. And it was just a row of snaps after that. All of them came loose. 
and the entire cowling had shifted forward off of the firewall about an inch and a half to two inches and had gone into the back baffling or the back bulkhead of the propeller. And the smell we were smelling was the back of that bulkhead burning the fiberglass off the front of that, <laughs> off the front of that cowling. Um, and it burned a good inch to inch and a half of fiberglass back on that thing. So that's what we were smelling was burning fiberglass um, coming into the, into the cabin there. Uh, it had shifted off to the right a little bit, probably about three inches off to the right as well. And the only thing that kept it from going completely loose and going in the propeller was the bottom of the cowling had caught on the exhaust pipe. Had it not been there, I don't know if the cowling would have gone ahead and continued on it forward in the propeller. Um, I just know that uh, we've kind of uh, averted a pretty bad disaster. Um, you know, we did t debrief after that um, and uh, discussed, okay, in the scenario, had that actually gone on the propeller, what are the things that could have happened? Um, best case scenario is the cowling would have gotten caught up in the propeller, broken it apart, and it'd fly away from, you know, fly free from the airplane, and now we just have an open engine, no problem, we're gonna fly the rest of the way in, obviously, declare an emergency at that point. Worst case, and I don't know if this would have happened or not, but worst case, it gets hung up and basically torques the engine, and now we've got so much stress on the motor mounts that we end up possibly breaking motor mounts loose, and we end up losing the engine completely from the aircraft. But the lesson that we took away from it was, you know, number one, don't lose your cool. You know, um, definitely cockpit resource management. I had him looking for a safe place to land while I'm doing troubleshooting, so that I, my, my focus is on flying on the air, flying the airplane. His focus is on looking for a spot to land. Um, and then kind of, you know, troubleshooting on the way a little bit as we're continuing and seeing if we can't come to some sort of resolution to where we can actually get to our destination safely or get to a safe landing point. Um, but that was, uh, that's probably one of the worst malfunctions I've had in the air with one of my students. But uh, good learning experience for both he and I, um, that whole situation there. Um, and uh, it's something that uh, he's able to, to learn from too and, and take that forward on as he continues to fly and get more, more flying time.